Welcome to day 27. Here we are uh, on, on this day. We've got Jess and Moses uh, all the way from Taiwan. How late is it for you guys today? 11. <laughs> 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Well, and, and so for you guys, it is day 27. For the rest of us, it's only day 26. So, so uh, no. <laughs> my, my bad. We, we are day 26. I'm Michael Pierce, uh, the host of 50 Days to Your Pentecost Challenge. And I am excited that Jess and his, uh, and his son Moses are with us. Uh, you met uh, Alice last week. She had all of her stuffies lined up on the sofa. It was wonderful. She is the, the just the, a great mom. So, so guys, um, I'll get a couple of announcements out of the way, and then we'll jump in. But uh, please, if if you are enjoying uh, any of these broadcasts, would you share it with your friends? Uh, this today's today's uh, interview. Um, any any parent or any child that is having a, ch a challenge with your, your mom and dad or your, or your child, this will be one that you want to share because the redemptive purpose of God in today's interview is just amazing. It is simply amazing. Just so you know, tomorrow uh, I will have our good friend Alvin Nicholson from Toronto uh, on air with us on Saturday. So today we, we have this dynamic duo, father and son. On Saturday, mm -hmm. we have another dynamic duo. We have Papa mm -hmm. Gideon Chu and his son, Caleb. And Caleb uh, is uh, now leading the church that, that uh, Gideon and May uh, founded. Uh, he's leading it with uh, the rest of a team. But they will be with us on Saturday. On Sunday, a, a new friend, but a wonderful new friend, Kelly Frazier from the U.S. down in South Carolina will be with us. And then on Monday, as a return guest, we've got uh, Fiona Eng from Toronto. And Tuesday, let me just say, if you're looking for fun, Tuesday's the day, circle the day. Tuesday, we will have Wanda Faust from St. John's, <laughs> Newfoundland. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and, and everybody that knows will know that Jess and I are a part of Wandaland. Uh, parliamentary procedure and we take care of many things in the nations with Wanda you'll have to come and hear that for yourself very, very proud to be the founding members the exclusive founding members of Wanda land <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> Moses so, is shaking his head yeah, yeah. This I've not I, heard of. <laughs> I, I don't know I don't know if Wanda's gonna watch this before we come on with her in live but Jess you might want to be on just to defend yourself because she will probably have something to say about this that's true that's true. <laughs> now, for those of you who thought today was going to be a wonderful Christian uh, religious uh, interview, I want you to know that that Jess and I, we, we just love having fun whenever we're together. And <clears throat> what's interesting is things that we thought were really fun, uh, our kids didn't always necessarily think were the same fun. Right. Let's let's be clear on that. OK, and we'll get into that in a minute. But but Jess was born in Taiwan. Uh, his par parents immigrated to from China. Uh, they then moved to the Philippines. Uh, his mom and dad were in ministry. And uh, then when he was 12 years of age, they moved clear from the Philippines to America. And from, from there, Jess, you spent 35 years of, so you're probably what, 42 to date? No, you're... Uh, <laughs> I hope to be. <laughs> After 35 years of, of living in the States, finding the bride of your life, Alice, um, and then relocating to IHOP in Kansas City, you led the Chinese uh, fellowship uh, of the, the House of Prayer, in the midst of, of hitting stride, something happened. I'm not going to tell, tell everybody what happened, but all of a sudden there was this incredible shift for the Sao mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. Please, let's, let's start to explore that. Just give us the background. Okay, real quick. Uh, when I arrived at IHOP, my heart was saying, wow, house of prayer context, day night worship, at least a two-year sabbatical. 
three months after having arrived, I'm the newly appointed <coughs> Chinese ministries director along with other international ministries leaders, and we formed the international ministry department. Three months after I arrived, I was flying to Hong Kong and Taiwan. And it was shocking to me because I never dreamed of it, never wanted it to be that way. But since it was so, there was just a wisdom. I think it straight came from the Holy Spirit. If you and Alice are going to go, take at least your two older children. That would be Abigail, his his older sister, and Moses. They were like 12, 13 then. Uh, right around 12, yeah. Yeah, 12, 13. 12, 13. So I said, Father, I'm mowing the lawn during that time. I'm saying, Father, I'm being sent to Asia. I really need the finances for four tickets, not two. Because if Asia is in the future, it has to do with my kids. I, I can't just be ministering in Asia. I, I, I would love our American born Chinese kids to have a chance to connect and to sense. Now, and, and this is the point. Here, <laughs> Alice is born in California. You uh, Missouri. Have, St. Have, Louis, Missouri, uh, actually. St. Louis, Missouri. I'm sorry. St. Louis. Uh -huh. And, and, uh, uh, here you are now in Kansas City. Um, for all of us that are non-Asian, I mean, we just think, okay, you're you're Chinese, and and you you probably came to North America sometime along the way. But but in fact, you are now Americans, um, considering going back to your homeland, mm -hmm. to to the land of your 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 parents, your grandparents. Where, where they have toiled for the salvation of a nation. <laughs> yes. And now you are, are saying, God, if you really want that, I need money for four tickets. I just want to make sure that I, I, that I caught that. Yeah. 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 I want money for four tickets because I, I had no burden for it. It was just pure obedience. <laughs> and I was thinking if it's going to happen, at least let it be us as a family, us and our kids. So that's how it began. Wow. Uh, little did I know, this is 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. We're going back every single summer. And by the second summer, no, by the third summer, it was our whole family going. And then by our fourth summer, the shock came because Abby and Moses, right during our summer ministry trip in Taiwan, began dialoguing with us, saying they felt the Holy Spirit moving on their heart to give up everything in America, to move to Taiwan in the language that I remembered to serve their generation in Taiwan. That was shocking. Uh, Abby's a pretty how, strong. How old was Indian. Abby? How old? How old was Abby and Moses? Uh, sixteen, seventeen, going uh, 15. 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, thereabouts. Okay, so they're really young. They're really young. Uh, they're, they're telling you that God is speaking to their heart, mm -hmm. and and that that God is wanting them to move from yeah. Kansas City, America, mm -hmm. to Taiwan. Yeah. And having grown up with parents who are, you know, tracking with the Lord, there's a joy about it. You, you always desire, you've always desired that your own children would hear God's leadership over their lives. So there was joy in it. But the trouble is, it's not going down the street to serve the Lord. It's flying halfway across <clears throat> the earth, w meaning they have to learn Chinese because they spoke very little Chinese. Uh, Abby had a great opportunity for college education. She tested really high. Moses was a rising young, I would say prodigy type drummer in the IHOP KC world. So there was a future, a, a glorious future that had to do with serving the kingdom, but they're going to come literally as nobodies who can't even speak the language 
to serve. So, so today's today's scriptures. I, I just want to touch on that <laughs> just for a moment because no, I mean because uh, so in Acts two one uh, we read when the day of Pentecost has fully come, hmm. they were all with one accord in one place, and hmm. and in hmm. then it says that in in, in Acts four uh, thirty two uh, it says all the believers were in one heart and one mind. Uh, no one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. Uh, they all shared everything they had. Uh, the, the Passion Translation says, selfishness was not a part of their community, for they shared everything they had with one another. And, and then you go down to John 17, this, this epic prayer of Jesus, and, it, and we, we see Jesus said, or Jesus says, I pray for them all to be joined together as one, even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. I pray for them to become one with us so that the mm -hmm. world will recognize that you sent me. Now, uh, Ann and I went through a very small scenario like you. You know, our daughter wanted to be to go to Belize. Um, and care for children in an orphanage when she wasn't yet done high school. And we, we uh, pleaded with her to, to finish high school. She ended up going into a missions program and, and, and did travel around the world. But it wasn't like we were sending our, our children off to live in another mm -hmm. place to, mm -hmm. to find their way. Um, how did, how, was there unity on this thought was there mm. one mind and and if there wasn't what did it look like and how do how do we get to the place we are today mm. in that point mm -hmm. looking looking back do you, did you feel there was i think oneness? i think in terms of the idea or the concept of us coming out and coming out here there was a oneness in the sense that we all felt that the Lord was leading my sister and I to go or to come out to Taiwan. Um, at the same time, my sister and I also felt like there was a oneness in the calling for our whole family to be coming to Taiwan. And we felt that the Lord needed to soften our parents' hearts and, and free them of their uh, stubbornness. <laughs> so that Why? They can because they weren't as they weren't as eager as you were to. <laughs> they weren't as obedient as we were. <laughs> I, I, we, we we were labeled as more dull of hearing. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I don't know if you remember this, Moses, but I think your dad was was leading the international Chinese no. uh, prayer movement for mm -hmm. IHOP Kansas. And and you're and you're saying that he was being dull of hearing. <laughs> I, I I just <laughs> how so so uh, we're having some fun, but but this is something that's very dear and it's very important that we we navigate this mm. difference of how we see our lives, how we walk our our lives together. I mean, I in today's meditation, I said you know. A lot of times as Christians, we, we think that, that if we're going to be one heart, one mind, that means we sing in unison. Everybody mm. sings the same note at the same time. The drummer keeps us going. Thank you very much for that, Moses. But, but in fact, we miss the beauty of four-part harmony. And here you're talking about four of you going off and, 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 and being obedient. This four-part harmony if you only sing your part without the others is can can sound a little rough on the edges unless you're singing lead but but the other parts are nice but they're only completed with the rest so let's walk out this this part because because the joking aside and it's a part of it to, to help us get through but it's important that that we understand how you ended up feeling how there ended up being you know communication challenge and so on yeah, i think because the i mean from since we were young you know uh a, a big thing that our family hit on was 
of doing family ministry, ministering together as one unit. Um, you know, when my parents were pastoring um, young adults, my sister and I would always, I mean, even from when we were younger, just kind of be hanging around, um, obviously being able to reap the benefits of having uh, Silicon Valley young adults. You know? Pretty wealthy Pretty young adults <laughs> take them out to play and yeah. eat and so on and so forth. Um, <laughs> and then moving on to as we're getting older, being able to be the same age as some of the youth that they ministered with and being able to... Uh, bring about a picture kind of for these youth of, you know, what a, you know, believing family um, interaction could be like, you know, for them and, and how they could interact with their parents and stuff like that. And we were also able to help, you know, bring these youth, you know, because of friendships that they had with us to be more engaged with, you know, what we we're doing in the church and stuff like that. Um, and then even going into IHOP, when my parents were leading the Chinese ministries department, my sister and I, you know, we served in those Chinese prayer meetings probably like three times a week. Um, we even had a prayer meeting that was um, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. Uh, on a school day <laughs> that, you know, they were okay with us serving on, you know. So we were very engaged with, you know, everything. And so I think when, when, we started doing these yearly trips to Asia, you know, that was also, you know, in alignment with, you know, what <coughs> my sister and I, or I, mean, I can't speak for her, but what I felt, you know, in that whole family serving together. And so when I felt so strongly that I was being called to move to Taiwan and minister in Taiwan, there was that feeling like, you know, what's mm. like, why are like, what are you guys, why are you guys not also feeling that calling how come you guys well actually at that point i feel like we all felt pretty strongly that eventually we'd end up here yeah and so for me i was kind of like well you feel that as well why don't you obey <laughs> you know <laughs> and and so yeah yeah mm -hmm. hurry up and get on with the program yeah yeah like, yeah we we all knew the trajectory but they felt ready to be launched. And whereas I felt uh, I, I, I hadn't gotten that green light yet yeah. to actually move. So, but they felt so strongly about it. And because there still is that historical one accord where we always want to honor how the spirit is talking to each individual through, of course, discerning it. We blessed them to go, but it, it also meant how come we're not fully in sync? Mm. Yeah, so I think that, that was where some of the more negative resonance began to eke in a bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you mentioned, Moses, that, that um, your mom and dad's ministry was most certainly the larger picture uh, uh, view of ministry, the, the nations and when you went to Taiwan, uh, it was, became very, very focused uh, on working within the local church setting. And so uh, you, you talked about just, you know, there were times where, you know, you had the family chats, but, but uh, you know, the, the WhatsApp chatter, I don't even know if WhatsApp was available that early on, but, but uh, how, how, how did you overcome the sense of I'm over here, they're over there. Uh, I have to make my own way. How am I supposed to walk in one heart with mom and dad? I think for myself, in especially in those years, um, I just didn't. I felt like at this point, um, I'm doing my own ministry and they feel called to be doing their own ministry wherever they are. Um, and so at that point, I just didn't really heed so much of this oneness or the importance of, you know, staying within the parental covering or spiritual, well, I guess you could say physical family unit kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's right. So, so we, we, we have, 
you know, um, this, this prophetic call to, to move forward. And, and then um, mom and dad uh, really, as, as an apostolic anointing, uh, saying, we're going to come, but, but the time's not yet. So, so then in, in, in two, what, what year was it, uh, Jess, that, that you and Alice and the rest of the family joined the pioneers of the family? <laughs> three years later in 2014 so they moved October 2011 and then 2014 around September uh, me and Alice uh, and then Josiah and Nehemiah the younger boys we finally arrived in Taiwan to be permanent residents wow and so um, so now uh you know, we, we, we all have these family dynamics and, and we don't get a chance to talk about them uh, honestly many times because we want to just get to, the, to either the, the good ending or, or the, the time of prayer because we're still in the midst of a bad ending. Hmm. The journey, uh, now that mom and dad arrive in Taiwan with your younger siblings, Moses, uh, you are... You are established for three years um, at the you know the ripe old age of eighteen, and uh, <laughs> and and so so how how did the transition work and and how did you how did you guys navigate because I think there's something very beautiful about the process the journey uh, that brought you to where you are today. Hmm. I mean, for me, still at that point, there was still a bit of disconnect. Um, my sister and I at that time were studying in the ministry school that our church had started. And that's after being church interns for two years. Um, and so we were very, you know, locked into like a very, very, you know, this this church is, you know, the kingdom kind of mindset, you know. And so you know, even though we were living under the same roof, based in the same city, location, house, um, they were still out and about all the time, you know, uh, whether that's international trips or going around Taiwan or, you know, having other ministry going on during, you know, our church's services. So uh, it felt a lot like, you know, either, you know, you're here, but you're not really here or, um, you're not faithful to like the church that we're at or, or, um, you know, that kind of, yeah. uh, judgmental, you know? <laughs> so, so, so yeah, there's a bit, still, of still a bit of grinding. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Mm. And, and, and I mean, I remember, uh, praying with you and Abigail, uh, actually not knowing, uh, anything of, of your journey, but praying with you when we were in Hong Kong and then, uh, uh, at, at one of those gatherings. And I remember you at one point said that going to the gatherings was not fun, dad. <laughs> you know, next time we'll either just stay at the hotel or, or, or something, but, but there is something that keeps bringing you back to this place of God's bigger picture, God's uh, redemptive purpose for a family that's multi-generational walking with God. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, th through this ups and downs, at least in my heart, and I believe in, in my children's heart, there's always an unknowing or a longing that serving God has a togetherness about it. Uh, practically, it looked very, very different, but yet in a heart, it, it, there, there has to be a togetherness about it. I don't know how. So I think having moved here, I, I am at the heart level fought for that, even though behaviorally, I, I probably wasn't making it that easy for them. Mm. But at the heart level, we, we, I, just, I contended, I prayed, I waited, I kept my mouth shut as much as possible. But I really felt that in 2018, thereabouts, God's, hand began to move again yeah to to bring the next phase of redemption 
and it has to do with the global family gatherings. Uh, I've been asking my children as nicely as we can, offering them the best of fun and the best of, you know, uh, they ha didn't really respond to it. I'll pay your way. You can get a vacation, whatnot. But in 2018, uh, my number three, Josiah, responded to a trip to France. And to my surprise, he flourished. And then he came back and became mom's and dad's voice, a proponent for these things that we're doing across the nations. And somehow it convinced his older brother to go with us to Egypt. And then from Egypt, went back to Jordan, and then Hong Kong, Singapore. So, so 2018, is it 18 or 19? 2018. Yeah, so maybe you can follow up with that. Um, in 2018, uh, there, there was um, that trip to Egypt, and, and he and my mom they, you know, they encouraged me to pray about considering going, you know, and, you know, there's the whole, you know, of uh, course, the whole Moses go to Egypt. Yeah, I, I, use, I use that thing. <laughs> Your name is Moses. Yeah. Why, not, why not go to Egypt? <laughs> and, um, but, you know, there was that pushback still, you know, I think a big part of that was because this was the ministry that pulled them away so much. Mm. So there was, you know, a bit of um, resentment. resentment or yeah, I guess resentment, yeah, even specifically towards certain people whose <laughs> names I won't say, but at that time, okay. <laughs> um, but um, I'm sorry for what I did, Moses. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I just, I was kind of like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working in the church. At that point, I was full-time staff. So I'm working in the church, you know, it's hard to get days or I don't have days off or it's hard to get days off. So, you know, I probably won't, I won't even think about it, you know. Uh, and then my my younger brother, he came to me and said, no, 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 you gotta, you gotta consider at least try to get off, you know, find time, you'll go, it'll be life-changing, you know, whatever. And still I was kind of like, eh. You know, there was that struggle there. Um, and then one of my coworkers, who's also, you know, a close friend of mine and spiritual brother, one, one, of, one day while, you know, I was talking with him and we were, you know, talking about this trip and how, you know, my dad had extended this invitation for me to go with. He's, he, he says to me, he says, I feel like this is very pivotal or very important to, you know, it will bring some sort of breakthrough between you and your dad. So I think you should go. <laughs> and, and, you know, that wasn't so much of like a convincing factor, but it, you know, it made me kind of like, okay, you know, out of obedience, I will go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't really willing to pray about it at that time, but you know, I had a spiritual brother who was praying about it for me. <laughs> <laughs> he said he felt like he heard from the Lord that, you know, it was it was pivotal or it was very important that I go on that trip. So I ended up going. Mm. Yeah. And I saw an amazing, quick, uh, profound work of the Holy Spirit in. Mm. I sometimes use the word rewiring. But most accurately, I think what the Holy Spirit did was brought his heart back to the original love, to the original perspective, mm. which was what I felt really needed to happen. But I knew I couldn't do it. It has to be a supernatural work. You know, uh, 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 today's, today's scriptures about unity and, and oneness and, and one heart. <clears throat> Um, they're all great, but but really, just listening to you now, Malachi mm. four six, mm. that the heart of the father mm -hmm. is turned to the children, mm. and and then the heart of the children is turned to the fathers, to the mothers, mm -hmm. and and this is where now this this picture of family, this picture of walking together, of of 
our children standing on our shoulders to go farther, go higher, go, go with greater grace than we have ever known. This is where it really comes. And my thought is that, you know, um, I don't know if I, if I showed this before, but I just, I want to show this because these guys, you know, they aren't just somebody that's on the screen, like Moses and Savi, <laughs> you guys just got married, like in March. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their picture is on our refrigerator. Okay. So, so it's not just that we're just having this conversation. Th this is real relationship here, folks. Mm -hmm. I remember praying with you and your sister a, a couple of different times at those, at those times where you might not have wanted to have been uh, in, in those <laughs> situations. Uh, but I'm proud of you. Uh, Moses, you know, as a young man, uh, owning, owning your place. And, and, you know, uh, the, the rub that you went through the, you know, how do we work out the prophetic? And how do we work out the leadership, the apostolic? And, and now you guys are walking with greater grace, greater oneness. Uh, and so I'd like, I'd like you to pray um, for the for the families, they might feel like their children are are way off. They're they're doing something mm -hmm. crazy. That maybe they're backpacking across Europe. Maybe they're maybe they're just sitting on the beach in California. But um, or or the the kids might be saying, "When are mom and dad going to catch it?" Mm -hmm. And and so would you guys just pray uh, yeah. for for families? that the very thing that we're talking about would be released over the airwaves. Mm. And if I may make a suggestion, if, if it's okay while we pray, would you mind putting that picture as I was officiating their wedding? I think that picture yeah. speaks about what we want to be praying about. That's so good. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to go first? Let me go first. Okay. Father, I'm looking at this picture that just happened in March, and this picture is not just a superficial ceremony. This picture is the love of a parent to a child and a child to a parent that has uh, gone through some bumps and twists and turns. But this picture speaks of you as our Heavenly Father, your zeal, your passion to fulfill what's prophesied in Malachi, that the hearts of the Father will turn towards the children and the children will turn to the fathers, that we can cancel this curse that has been released from darkness. And Father, I am especially praying for the parents, for the fathers. Give us the grace to be the first ones that turn. Yes. Give us the grace, especially in the Asian cultures. It, it's so hierarchical, but I, I'm sure it applies to every culture. Give the fathers the grace to overcome their own pain, their own awkwardness, and to turn their hearts. Give us the grace to open up our hearts, turn with tenderness and humility, repentance, so that our next generation might find an easier way to turn as well. Mm. I believe in you. And as I'm praying, I pray with confidence because that's exactly what you did to my life in my heart. You've helped me to turn towards my children. So I pray for that and I bless all the parents that are listening who might have been waiting or facing some of these challenges. I pray for your grace to be released. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. <clears throat> so I just specifically in this in this time, in this age, um, in how youth are being pushed and um, brought up to, you know, make their own name or 
um, make something of themselves. Father, we ask that you would just break in and um, once again tenderize um, mm -hmm. our hearts. Um, tenderize our hearts that we would step into um, the first identity that we had as children. Mm -hmm. um, children of God, children of our parents. Um, and help us to um, once again return to that that place of unity that place of oneness um, even as you know the world keeps telling us as uh, young adults as youth as students to um, find out who you are and be individualistic or be your own person have your own stuff um, let us step into that um, place of harmony with you know with our family units with our with our parents um, go back to that place of of unity go back to that place of um, being able to bounce off one another and step into you know the calling the spiritual calling that you know, you've put on us as a family or step into the spiritual inheritance that you've given us um, as children because of the family that we are in yeah. I would ask that for a tenderizing of hearts um, and for a spirit of humility and submission to be um, to allow us to once again be under that um, spiritual umbrella, the spiritual covering um, of our parents, even though in our heads we may feel like we can go at it on our own or that we should be able to go at it on our own or that I'm an adult now. I don't need that spiritual covering or I don't need that. Um, or the feeling that the spiritual covering is a spiritual, you know, like a chain that's having us be locked down or a boundary that we're confined to. But let us once again um, be in that place of realizing that this isn't a boundary. It's not a bondage, but it's a it's a it's a covering and it's a protection that allows us to flourish. It's a protection that allows us to stand on their shoulders and jump even higher or go even further. So we ask that you would once again um, allow the hearts of the fathers to go back to their children and the hearts of the children to reconnect with their fathers mm -hmm. and mothers. Um, and that you would just have allow us to, you know, reconnect in that place of unity, in that place of oneness. In Jesus name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Wow, Amen. guys. It's it's late, late for you. Thank you for <laughs> for being up. Um, folks, if you've just getting to the end of this time uh, with Jess and Moses, uh, I, I ask you, would you share this with your friends on Facebook? Share it. Uh, uh, like it, uh, subscribe to the to the YouTube channel only because uh, when you share this, you're going to share it with somebody who's going through undoubtedly, undoubtedly going through what you're going through because they're your friends. They're 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 mostly going to be people of faith, and they're and they're wondering how do we walk this out. Moses, I want to thank you for the grace with which. You share um, the honor that you that you give. You've gone beyond the tokenism, uh, and and you've gone through the real deal. And Jess, uh, you know, I know there were times where you had to bite your tongue, and and you wondered if you'd ever have a voice again because you had to bite your tongue. But thank you for the grace, uh, for the perseverance, and uh, you as a family are a great blessing to all of us. And so uh, thank you for that. We will be back tomorrow uh, at this, well, at nine o'clock mountain time. And uh, my good friend, Alvin Nicholson from Toronto will be with us. You won't want to miss him. He is just a delight. He is a father in the nation. And uh, so please join us tomorrow. Until then, God bless. Thanks very much. And may you be challenged by Holy Spirit as we go through these 50 days together. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Blessings. <laughs>